What do you call a group of ravagers at a party? Rave-agers. Beautiful. The ravager is the mid-range artillery of the swarm. They can be morphed from roaches. No tech requirement needed other than having roaches, I guess. The morph will require an additional 25 minerals, 75 gas, and one supply on top of the cost of the roach. A little pricey, yes, but their potential for value is high. Before I talk about their basic stats, let's recap the roaches' stats for comparison's sake. Roaches have 145 life, 16 damage, 4 range, 3.15 base movement speed, 1.43 attack speed, 1 armor, and are tagged as armored. Ravagers, on the other hand, have 120 life, 16 damage, 6 range, 3.85 base movement speed, 1.14 attack speed, 1 armor, and are not tagged as armored. To summarize for anyone that doesn't care about the numbers, Ravagers have faster attack and movement speeds, a longer attack range, and won't get utterly wrecked by anti-armored forces. The major downside in the exchange is that Ravagers are less durable than Roaches. Now for the real reason to make Ravagers. I present to you the Corrosive Bile. Every Ravager can cast this ability. There is no research requirement or energy cost, but there is a 7 second cooldown that is separate for each Ravager. Once the ability is selected, you must choose a ground location for your target. Upon making this choice, the Ravager will launch the orange orb of bile goodness into the air. After 2.5 seconds, the orb will descend in a straight line down to the target location, dealing 60 damage to all targets in the area. Friendly, enemy, ground, air, cloaked, or structure, the bile does not discriminate. Multiple Ravagers can launch their biles at the same location, and the damage will stack very deadly. As a final note, and to illustrate one of the main reasons the Ravager was introduced, Corrosive Bile destroys Protoss force fields on contact. Just target the bile onto the force field's location to crack it open. In practice, most of the decision making that you have to make comes down to your bile micro. I can't think of any situation where you would want Ravagers and not use their ability. Since it's a free ability and instant cast, it's essentially extra potential damage. Honestly, the Ravager's greatest strength is that it forces a decision out of your opponent. When you launch the Biles, they must choose. Do they either move their forces out of danger or suffer the incredible damage? Sometimes you will want to focus fire down a priority target, such as siege tanks, liberators, or warp prisms. Other times you may want to spread out the Biles more to force your opponent to have to move their entire army. The Ravager is designed to punish static forces and unaware players. However, they lack the overall durability of their Roach predecessor. With their lower health amount, they can die quickly in direct combat without additional support. Let's recap some potential weaknesses. They are relatively expensive for an early game unit. They can only hit one unit at a time. They rely on the Corrosive Bile to hit air units and they're very ahem, bulky. It would seem that those extra minerals and gas that goes into their production goes straight to their thighs. Terran players, good news. The best answer is the old reliable Triple M, Marines, Marauders, and Medivacs. 
Since the Ravager punishes static forces, it can be tough to get effective use out of things like siege tanks, widow mines, or liberators. Stim will allow you to move necessary bio forces out of the way of the corrosive biles, as well as close the distance on the Ravagers. To speak more practically though, you will likely never see pure Ravager, so allow me to say, I still build siege tanks. I'm even inclined to build an additional factory to try and make up for any tank losses due to the biles. Protoss professionals, it is quite common to see Ravagers make an appearance, even in mass. The answer is generally having plenty of army units. Charge lots can overwhelm and close the distance. Blink stalkers should be able to avoid the biles with ease. Air units, such as oracles or void rays, can be very helpful too at targeting down the Ravagers. One of my favorite answers, though, is the Disruptor. It's a little risky, but successful hits will not only decimate the Zerg forces, they can also crush your opponent psychologically, inducing both rage and trash talk. Zerg zoologists, you are very likely to see four Ravagers in the phone boot knife fight that is ZVZ. Why four, you ask? Because that's how many it takes to one-shot overlords with Biles. They just aren't really that effective in direct combat because they get overwhelmed so easily. Plus, Zerglings and Roaches can dodge the Biles with ease and already dominate the early and mid game of the matchup. I guess you could see some Ravager use versus Lurkers, but in a standard game, there's better answers to Lurkers at the time that you would usually see them. <clears throat> Vipers. <clears throat> Alright, bringing it back in summary. Usually the answer to Ravagers is to just build more Roaches. The Ravager is more expensive, so you should be able to outproduce them. Just overwhelm them. Hydras and Mutas are pretty solid shutdowns too, if you can somehow claw your way out of the Roach Wars mud. They may take some control to maximize their value, but the Ravager can be extremely helpful in a fight, and is easily one of my top 19 favorite Zerg units. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. So this is the Zerg, the great enemy who brought the Templars so low. How utterly disappointing. <laughs>